So this is QDF5, and then you have a QDF3, which is yeah. for, we built for X150. Got and it. Then you're ah, right. And then, um, so mine's still bodied, isn't it? My S type, I think. Yeah, 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 but you've got a later type diff. Ah, so, so it's the same as the aluminium cars. Yeah, well, that's it, yeah. Oh, look at this. What's this? Just a, oh, wow. Just a, just a big old beast. Yeah, yeah, it's a fair old unit. So, which way would it mount inside the diff? So, yeah, if I've got, got like my prop that. shaft coming down from here, like that. like that, okay. And the whole thing moves unless you yeah, lose yeah, traction on, yeah. on one of the. Uh, Crown wheel bolts onto that. Yeah. And yep, yep. Away she goes. Nice, yeah, yeah. excellent. Look. Hi all, so in this episode we're talking about Quaif ATB upgrades for open rear diffs, specifically a Quaif unit for my 2003 Jaguar S-Type R. So what's the point of this upgrade? Jaguar S-Type R's never had a limited slip differential setup, unlike some earlier Jaguars that benefited from a Salisbury limited slip rear differential. My Jaguar V12 XJS Coupe, as an example, has a Salisbury limited slip differential setup. The Jaguar S Type R, as standard, has an open differential and relies on the traction control system to manage power transmission to the road. Anyone familiar with driving a relatively powerful rear wheel drive car with an open differential may identify with the incidence of single wheel spin, braking being applied to reduce wheel spin, or the engine control unit reducing power. Whilst this arrangement may well be suitable for less powerful cars, a car such as my S-Type R with relatively high torque output at low engine speed and some 370 brake horsepower at the rear wheels can quickly overwhelm the available traction. Not only is this undesirable from a drivability perspective, it can be frustrating particularly when seeking swift acceleration from a busy road junction where the road surface may be damp or cold. The Quaif Automatic Torque Biasing Differential Centre provides an excellent upgrade option for my S-Type R. RT Quaif Limited has been around since the 1960s and manufactures all of its products here in the UK across two sites in Kent in towards the southeast of England. The Quaif ATB unit uses helical gears comprising left and right sun gears and pinion gears. This robust arrangement provides immediate torque transfer between the driving wheels without completely locking up, thus virtually eliminating all unwanted single wheel spin. This avoids the traction control system from intervening, except in the most extreme circumstances where both wheels are spinning without traction. The upgrade process involves removing the rear differential, stripping it down, fitting the Quaif ATB unit, rebuilding the rear diff, and then refitting the rear diff back onto the car. We now join Tony from Tom Lenthal Limited, who explains what's involved with removing the rear differential. Right, so here we are, <laughs> S-Type R. What's the uh, general plan then to uh, get this uh, rear diff off then? So, both drive shafts need to come out. Okay. Prop shaft off. Yep. And drop it out. Simple as that. Yeah, I'll make it sound simple. Yeah, I was about to say, it's me some challenges, day yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically what we're going to be doing. Send it off and... Um, okay. Get it rebuilt with a quaif. Okay, so does the quaif come here or is it going to be sent off to a specialist? No, it goes, goes off to a specialist, goes off to a um, diff builder. Okay. Um, we keep the diff, uh, the, the quaifs, yep. rebuilds them, um, it'll have all new seals put in. Nice. And obviously the quaif internals. Yeah, yeah. Um, we do sometimes do it on an exchange basis. Right, right. We'll keep one in stock. Oh, I've with got you, just for a quicker we'll turnaround. But, but given the... The low miles of yeah, this. Yeah, 32,000 miles on that one side. So. It's clean, yeah, really clean car. So we want to keep the original casing. Yeah. Um, keep it as low miles as possible. And uh, yeah, let's get cracking. Nice one. So this is where we just separate out, it starts to separate out the drive shaft, you say? Yes. Yeah, okay. so what we'll do rather than, um, what we'll do, take the bottom arm off, yep. push the hub right out, yep. and it gives us enough room to pull the drive shaft out of the diff, Got it. and then it's way out. Some people take the whole hub off, but right. we normally get, yeah, we can normally get away with just pulling them out of the way. Nice. Thank you. Is it? But a lot of the time we, um, sometimes we do have to, 
and diagnosis or substitution. There we go. There you go. Right. Mm -hmm. So, all these bolts, are these just holding the uh, diff? So, these hold the rear of the diff, right. the back of the case in there. So, we're going okay. to get those cracked off. Yep. Um, you've got one bolt at the front holding it in. Yep. So, once these drive shafts are out, yep. we'll be good to just uh, drop it down on the stand. Oh, well, you can use a gearbox mount stand or something. Or a little transmission, yeah, a little transmission jack. jack or whatever. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just separating the. So these are the actual drive shafts coming, coming out of the diff. Out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They won't pop all the way out until we start getting the hubs out of the way. Right. And um, we're gonna just get the oil drainer over. Okay. In case we lose any oil out of there. Was well, probably likely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, make a nasty yeah, mess on the floor. Fair yeah, enough. Definitely not. And, cool. Um, oh, and then you start to. Uh, yeah. Just make sure the prop shaft's gonna move. When yep. we start coming down, which is yeah, yeah. nice. So the idea is now yep. is I'll grab an extra pair of hands. Yep. We'll undo the front. Yep. Drop the rear bolts out. Yep. And then we'll wiggle its way out. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Tiny bit. She's going to go tiny. Yeah, she will. Look at that. See? Wow. That's probably saved quite a bit of time doing it this way as well, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Many hands make like work. Apparently. Apparently. Oh. Look at that. One, two, and then off the prop. Whoa. So there, we go. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Cheers, mate. Good, oh, blimey. All right. See you later. Perfect. Perfect. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Blimey, it's still got the Jaguar label, label on it and everything. And it's so readable. It's <laughs> and it's readable, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, isn't it? No, I'm a... Sorry, I'm not. What have you got there? 287. Oh, 287, okay. Yeah. We'll drain the oil out. Yep. Um, send it off to the specialist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that quaff in there. Nice one. What's that little disc you got in your hand there, Pat? It's a spacer. Just a spacer. Just, just, just a spacer, spacer yeah. Up with the, just uh, line up onto the sub. Got it. Okay. So it's be a bit nosy around here again. So it's actually a dry shaft. Well, clearly, the only way we can really prove out this enhancement with the Quaif ATB rear differential is to uh, take the car for a test drive. So let's go do that just now. Well, the performance difference is uh, pretty much immediately noticeable. Immediate instantaneous power planted on the road without any wheel spin or slip. I'm currently on some older uh, Michelin PS4s all round. I think the oldest ones on the back uh, date from 2018 and we're in 2025 just now. So getting a little bit old, but certainly the initial impressions on some fast roads, um, also pulling away at roundabouts, T-junctions, uh, it's really solid in that it really does promote better adhesion of the uh, tyres onto the road surface. So there's no more embarrassing single wheel peel no more bogging down with the engine control module causing the throttle body to back off the power. Previously, efforts like that would have uh, generated an awful lot of uh, single wheel spin, whereas now it just feels a lot more controlled. Yes, 
if you uh, provoke it by mashing the accelerator pedal to the floor then you will break traction but it's definitely more manageable than it used to be so I'd say overall success but I'll reserve final judgment until we do the track day at Silverstone because then we should see the Quaife ATB differential centre really come into its own so that's it thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed or found some of this video useful if you did please consider liking this video and subscribing if you're not already really would be appreciated and look forward to uh, seeing you on the next one thanks a lot